Good morning. Uh, Chief Superintendent Bob Scully from Norfolk Constabulary. At about 7pm uh, last night, we received reports that an aircraft had crashed somewhere on the North Norfolk coast. That scene was quickly identified as where we are now on Clay Marsh, just off East Bank, for those that know it, and that the crash involved a Parva Hawk HH-60 American Air Force helicopter with four occupants. There was another Parva Hawk aircraft of the same make and model uh, in the vicinity at the time. Police, uh, RAF and USAF um, personnel responded uh, and uh, have identified the crash site, which is a fairly substantial area and we have currently cordoned off about 400 square metres of the marsh area and prevented access to the public on the A149 road uh, running past the crash site. Those cordons are likely to remain in place for all of today. The actual crash site itself I would describe as an area of debris on difficult terrain in the marsh that's about the size of a football field. During the course of the night, police, USAF uh, resources and RAF resources have been conducting a full scene assessment uh, in difficult terrain, as I say, and that has allowed us to plan for the activities today, which will involve further close examination and scenes examination and preserving evidence from the crash site. I might explain to you all the uh, situation regarding jurisdiction. At the present time, the police, on behalf of Her Majesty's Coroner, are responsible for conducting an investigation into deaths that have occurred um, here uh, in the UK. Once we are satisfied and the coroner is satisfied that we uh, do not need to carry out a further investigation at this time, we will then pass the management of the scene to the air investigation branches of the UK and US military. So during the course of today, uh, that handover may take place uh, once the coroner has approved that handover. Once that has happened, the scene will then be managed by the US and UK military air investigation branches, and they will carry out a more technical investigation that may last for some considerable time. One aspect of this is that the crashed aircraft did contain ammunition. That ammunition is not of any great significance, it is bullets, if you will, but those are scattered about that area of the site that I just described to you, and so the site is hazardous to members of the public and those people that would normally visit this area for bird watching and other nature interest activities. So for the present time, uh, we will be uh, assisting and working with the military to ensure public safety by restricting access to that area. Andrew Turner, BBC. Uh, was there a mayday of this helicopter ditching or was it actually without warning to the pilot? Uh, we're not speculating on what exactly occurred. All we received was a report that an aircraft had crashed. Heart Radio, um, have the bodies of those killed been removed from the crash site? At the present time, the coroner, who is responsible for the investigation into the deaths, is carrying out a daylight assessment of the situation. And then we will arrange as soon as possible for the deceased to be removed from the site. Uh, Emma Birchie from Sky News, what can you tell us about the second helicopter which landed? What were the circumstances of that, as far as you know? As far as I know, the two aircraft were involved in some training activity. And, of course, because they were involved in the activity and both airborne, then the most immediate aircraft to provide assistance or to be available at the scene was the other aircraft. Um, it would be a matter for the investigation to determine whether or not there was any causal link. Um, my understanding is, is that uh, apparently not, but we don't know, and that's the important thing. We shouldn't be speculating here. We should allow them to carry out their full investigations. So. No, sorry, that's sorry, right. Can you just describe a little more about the scene this morning because obviously we haven't seen it in terms of the state of the wreckage and the area it covers 
Yes. How, 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 yeah. whether, there is, whether it's scattered over yeah. a very wide area? As I said earlier, the crash scene involving the aircraft that did crash is about the size of a football field, and there is debris um, around that sort of area. And this is on the beach itself rather than in the marsh? Uh, it's um, not on the beach, although there are some bits of debris that would be vulnerable to high tide, and so we need to have moved during the course of the night to deal with some of the debris, but the majority of the debris is on the marsh. How are the British emergency services working with US personnel on this? Very well. Um, initially, ambulance, fire and rescue service and police were all involved in the response last night. And the situation that we have now is, is that we are obviously moving from a potential rescue operation to one of preserving the scene and carry out an investigation. So fire and ambulance colleagues still maintain an interest but have stood their people down. And uh, we are now working with the US military and the RAF to uh, assist in their investigation and ours at the present time. And as I said earlier, at some point we will hand over to the air investigation side of the military, both UK and US. But that will only happen after the coroner has given consent for that to occur. Obviously, some of the people coming here were working here overnight. These must have been their colleagues. How, what's the response been from the US forces? Well, as you would expect, we uh, in the UK police have expressed our condolences to our US colleagues, uh, you know, for the loss of some of their crew. Um, it's a desperately sad time. Uh, the US uh, authorities have been responsible for notifying the next of kin of those people that have sadly died.